Welcome to N3 Electrotechnology. We're going to be looking at Chapter 3, DC Generators. The main function of a generator is to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. In terms of the operation, we can use Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which states that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux, there will be an induced EMF. Now, as the coil rotates and cuts through the magnetic lines of flux, an EMF is generated. The generated EMF will be in the same direction as the current. The strength of the induced EMF or the size of the induced EMF is dependent on the magnetic flux density, the rate at which the lines are cut, the number of pole pairs, and the number of coils. Okay, activity 3.1 on page 23. Question one, state the function of a generator. The function of the generator is to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Question two, a prime mover is a mechanical source of angular motion. Question three, name three prime movers. We get a petrol engine, a windmill, and a turbine. Name four factors that influence the magnitude of a generated EMF. It is dependent upon the strength of the magnetic flux, the rate at which the lines are cut, the number of pole pairs, and the number of coils. The definition of commutation. Commutation is the reversal of the EMF and current in the short-circuited coil during transfer from one segment to the next. Yeah, we've got a two-dimensional view of a commutator, which with each segment divided up, um, you, the commutator is usually made of copper and is insulated by a material called mica. Here we've got a, a good scenario where the brush is moving from point C to point D. As the brush moves, we'll notice that the alternating current changes direction. Hence the term, the reversal of EMF and current through the short-circuited coil. What are the negative consequences of commutation? We end up with sparking at the brushes and damage to the commutator surface due to heating of the commutator. There are, there are a few methods that we can use to overcome the effects of commutation. We can increase the brush contact, we can use interpoles, we can shift the brushes, and we can use compensating windings. Let, let's look at this in greater detail. Where will we find interpoles? Interpoles are found between the main poles. Compensating windings are found in the slot of the pole shoe. The armature windings and the current through the armature windings also flow through the compensating windings and therefore they are connected in series. Shifting the brushes for a generator will shift the brushes forward and for a motor will shift the brushes backwards. We notice that there are two axes, the geometric neutral axis and when we shift the brush, we're going to shift it towards the magnetic neutral axis. Okay, activity 3.2. Question 1. What do you understand by the term commutation? Commutation is the reversal of the EMF and current in the short-circuited coil during transfer from one segment to the next. Question 2. State the adverse effects of commutation. It causes sparking at the brushes and damage to the commutator surface. State four methods used to reduce sparking. Increase the brush contact using carbon brushes. We can use interpoles. We can use compensating windings. And we can shift the brushes forward for a generator and backwards for a motor. Question four. What do we call the angle between the magnetic neutral axis and the geometric neutral axis? We call that the brush shifting angle. Question five. With regards to brush shifting, what does forwards mean? A brush will be shifted forwards in the direction of rotation for a generator. Question six. Where exactly in DC machines are interpoles situated? Interpoles are found between the main poles. Question seven. Where are the compensating windings located? Compensating windings are found embedded in slots on the pole shoes. Question 8. 
which current flows through both the interpoles and the compensating windings? Armature current. Okay, let's look at the different types of generators. Firstly, we've got the separately excited generator. Now we'll note by the circuit diagram that the DC supply to the field coils is completely separated from the armature. Now to control the amount of exciting current through the field winding, we would have to include a variable resistor in the circuit. The load characteristic curve, we've got load current on the horizontal axis and terminal voltage on the vertical axis. Now for a separately excited generator, the load characteristic is exactly the same as the shunt generator. It remains relatively constant, but at some point it does tend to drop off. This is known as a drooping load characteristic. The reason for this drop in terminal voltage is due to armature reaction and RA, RA. A practical application for a separately excited generator, it can be used for ward Leonard motor generator systems. Right, right at the bottom of the page, there's a term that we're going to look at called residual magnetic flux. Now, even though you've got an electromagnet, the steel becomes magnetized as current runs through it. But what we find is that even after the current is removed, there's still some mag magnetizing force left behind. And that is known as residual flux. There are three types of self-excited generators. We get series, shunt, and compound. They are called self-exciting because they produce their own self-exciting current. Okay, let's look at the series wound generator. The field winding is connected in series with the armature. Our generator is producing armature current and supplying electrical load. Because it's a series circuit, current remains the same and voltage is divided. Hence, if we look at the generated EMF formula, we'll notice that there are three volt drops. We've got the terminal voltage across the terminals, we've got a volt drop across the armature, and we've got a volt drop across the series winding. The load characteristic for a series generator is known as a rising load characteristic. At some point though, it does reach saturation. Um, the application for a series round generator, it can be used for boosters for long transmission lines. Let's take a look at this shunt wound generator. It's got a field winding connected in parallel with the armature. Our generator is still producing armature current. At the junction, most of the current goes through the supply and a small amount of current goes through the shunt winding. Hence, our formula for the generator EMF is slightly smaller. We only got two volt drops. As voltage remains the same across the, the terminal voltage, and the shunt winding. Okay, as we said earlier, the shunt wound generator has the same load characteristic as a separately excited generator. It has a drooping load characteristic, and that is due to armature action and RA, RA. Shunt wound generators are used for charging batteries. Okay, this brings us to our first calculation, example 3.1, and this is a shunt wound generator. Example 3.1 is a shunt wound generator with a shunt field resistance of 200 ohms and an armature resistance of 0.15 ohms and supplies 45 amperes at a terminal voltage of 250 volts to a certain load. The first part of the question is to calculate the armature current. Now to calculate the armature current, it is the supply current plus the shunt current. The supply current is 45 amps, and to calculate the shunt current, it's going to be the terminal voltage divided by the shunt resistance. The terminal voltage is 250 volts, and the shunt resistance is 200. Is there a small amount of current going through the shunt winding? Most of the current goes through to the supply. And our armature current is a total of the supply current and the shunt current. Okay, part two of this question. Calculate the generated EMF. Now for a shunt generator, we must remember it's always a positive sign because the EMF induced is in the same direction as the current. Okay, the terminal voltage is 250. The armature current is 46.25. 
the armature resistance, which is a smaller value of 0.15. And that gives us a generated EMF of 256.938 volts. Okay, the third part of this question is to calculate the power delivered to the load. Now this is a DC circuit, therefore there is no power factor involved in this circuit. So the power formula for a DC circuit is V times R. The current that we're going to be using is the supply current. Our terminal voltage is 250, the supply current is 45. And if we simplify that, we're going to get 11.25 kilowatts. Okay, our next example, if you want, you can push pause at this point and double check that you understand the previous question. Example 3.2, a shunt wound generator delivers 2.5 kilowatts of power at a terminal voltage of 200 volts. If the shunt field resistance is 120 ohms, calculate the following. Okay, first of all, this is a parallel circuit and it is a generator, therefore our formulas are going to be positive. Now in part A, we're going to calculate the armature current, which is a combination of the supply current and the shunt current. To calculate the supply current, it's going to be power over voltage. To calculate the shunt current, it's going to be the terminal voltage over the shunt resistance. Let's substitute those values in. Our power is 2,500 watts. The terminal voltage is 200 the terminal voltage over the shunt resistance of 120. A small amount of current goes through the shunt winding. Most of the current goes through to the supply. And our armature current is a combination of both of those currents and that gives us 14,167 amps. Okay, point B. We need to calculate the armature resistance if the generated EMF is 210 volts. So we've been given some additional information Remember that the generated EMF is produced by the armature. So let's substitute all those values in. The generated EMF is 210. The terminal voltage is 200. Our RA is 14,167. We're going to use a little bit of maths to manipulate this equation. Okay, so you get RA on its own. It's the generated EMF. Subtract the terminal voltage divided by the armature current. And we end up with a reading of 0, 0,707 ohms. Okay, point C. Question 3.1. Our circuit with a power resistance of 0,707ohmsRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedRevivedR
A compound ion generator, here we have a long shunt and a short shunt. It's a combination of both the series and shunt windings. Compound wound generators. An over-compounded generator is where the terminal voltage is greater than the no-load voltage. A level-compounded generator is where the terminal voltage is the same as the no-load voltage. And for an under-compounded generator, the terminal voltage is less than the no-load voltage. What is the difference between cumulative and differential compound wound generator? For differential, the term different is the clue. The windings are such that they oppose each other and the current flows in opposite directions. Therefore, the resultant magnetic field is going to be smaller. A cumulative compound generator, the field windings are such that they assist each other and current flows in the same direction. And therefore, the resultant magnetic field will be larger. <clears throat> in the case of a separately excited generator, can the field coils be overexcited? Explain your answer. Yes, the field coils are supplied by an external voltage source. The exciting current can be quickly reach high values. A rheostat or variable resistor is used to control the size of the exciting current. Question two, explain what you understand by the term excitation. Excitation means passing current through a coil which then produces a magnetic field, such as separately excited and self-excited. State what is meant by a separately excited generator and give one use of this machine. The DC supply to the field coils is completely separated and is used in motor control systems. Question four, explain what is meant by self-excited. It is when a machine produces its own self-exciting current. Name three types of self-excited generators. We get series, shunt, and compound. State what is meant by the following terms. Cumulative compound and differential compound. Cumulative compound, the results in flux is the sum of the two magnetic fields. For differentially compounded, the result in flux is the difference between the two fluxes. Explain what is meant by the following terms. Under compounded, the terminal voltage is less than no load. For over compounded, the terminal voltage is greater than the no load. Under compounded, the terminal voltage is the same as the no load. Okay, yeah, we've got a nice uh, calculation to look at. Okay. Question nine, a 400 volt shunt wound generator delivers 50 amperes. If the shunt field resistance is 200 ohms and the armature resistance is more comma 25 ohms, calculate the following. All right, so part one, let's calculate the armature current. For a shunt wound generator, it's gonna be positive and the armature current is a combination of the supply current and the shunt current. Our supply current is 50 amps. To calculate the shunt current, is going to be V over R shunt. The supply voltage or terminal voltage is 400 and the shunt resistance is 200. Therefore, it's going to be 50 plus 2. And that gives us an armature current of 